in my mind, my mission is split into two halves. In the first half of my mission, the second half of my mission. Uh, the first half, I was very, very much focused on investigators, ministering to investigators. I had never really thought a ton about ministering to my companion. Um, I was of the mindset of all missionaries are prepared to be on missions. They're, they're out here for the right reasons. And, uh, and um, I never really thought they would ever that the contrary would ever exist. Didn't spend a lot of time trying to help my companions. I mostly spent time trying to focus on investigators and helping investigators to progress. Well, around the, the mid midway point of my mission, I had a companion named Elder Lake, um, Brandon. Brandon Lake. He taught me some re very valuable um, things. He was actually the missionary who trained me to be a zone leader. And um, one of the things he told me was, I can't remember exactly how he put it, but something to the extent of everyone you meet is going through some intense personal struggle that you don't know about. You can basically assume that when you meet a person for the first time and you'll be right basically every time. Um, and that really like, to something that's really stuck with me, stuck with me is that um, even if it's not the case, like you're better off assuming that because it really helps you to humanize and connect with the other individual. Um, really helped me to kind of get outside of myself, and uh, that's something that's helped me at this point in my life is really get outside of myself and recognize, yeah, I have problems, everybody's got problems, but uh, my problems aren't as big as everyone else's. Right, no matter what I'm going through, like there, everybody else is going through something that's just as big as what I'm going through. So that's really helped me in that way, just working with people and being able to be a friend to other people. And that really changed my perspective for the second half of my mission, where I started to realize that not, I wasn't just there to find people to baptize. Right, That was a big part of why I was there, but that wasn't the only thing. I was there for the peop people I was serving with as well. Um, whether it was missionaries like I was companions with, missionaries that were in my district or zone, I was there to help them too. So that was probably a that was a huge thing that I learned on a on a personal and a spiritual level. Now there's of course plenty of other life lessons, life skills I learned and developed while I was there. Organizing, managing time, that is not something that I ever ever uh, did. <laughs> before the mission, um, you learn that really quickly when you're a missionary. Um, hopefully, I mean, the quicker you learn it, the better off you are. It's how to, how to really organize yourself, manage your time, and uh, set goals and kind of commit to your, own, to your own goals. How to work with other people. It's not just about getting things done, it's about making connections. I really learned the value of making connections with people. You can go through a mission and you know, you can baptize 100 people if you, if you want to, and you can say that's a great mission, but if you haven't made any friends, you've missed out on a lot of the value you can get from a mission. The connections, the relationships I've gained from my mission are the most valuable thing to me on earth. Um, and that's not just from people I, I taught and baptized, that's from, that's from companions, that's from members that were in the wards. Now, it's difficult to explain why you can become so close to someone when you're a missionary in such a short amount of time, but that's what happens. In the La Costa ward in Carlsbad, I was there and there were these two awesome kids we were teaching um, named Braxton and Scooter. Um, they, were, um, they were both African-American uh, teenagers and um, Braxton was living with Scooter's family. Now Scooter's family, um, they were um, all, they were members of the church, but they weren't, they weren't very active at the time. Um, uh, a lot of the family was attending a, another congregation and, um, I think a, like a local and born again Christianity or some kind of, some kind of Christian church. I wasn't really sure. I can't really remember the name of it this time at this point, but, uh, Braxton was living with them. It was very interesting. Braxton was a very open, very, very friendly guy. Um, but uh, because of different you know, different cultural things, um, it, we had to tiptoe around a few uh, of a few touchy subjects with them in regards to to race, in regards to um, basic beliefs, which was pretty tough. But we were we were getting by slowly but surely, um, helping them to learn things without um, offending anybody. And uh, what made it difficult though was that. Um, and it's almost silly to think about it, but uh, was that they really didn't have um, church clothes. 
they didn't have like a shirt and tie and have suits that they would wear to church. They would come to church in their normal street clothes and um, they wear like a baseball cap or something like that. And every time we, uh, we, they came to church and they were coming to church on their own. Like the, the mom, she wasn't coming with them. These two 16 and 18 year old guys were choosing to come to church on a Sunday on their, their own choice. Um, which is amazing to think about that. But one of the comments we kept getting from members of the ward was, uh, have you talked to them about the hats? <laughs> have you talked to them about the hats? And um, we had, but that really wasn't what was important. We were talking to them about Joseph Smith. We were talking to them about, you know, I don't know, prophets and revelation and priesthood and um, things that are, you know, a little more, a little more um, essential for conversion. Uh, more so than a than a, tr a traditional dress code that we have today in our you know church society. <laughs> because of that, I, f I feel like Braxton and Scooter they felt like they were being a little discriminated against because they weren't wearing the same clothes as everybody else, and it became tough because I can't say I can't necessarily say that they weren't. Um, I mean, we loved them for who they were, but uh, and we were fine with it. But you can tell. And they could tell that they weren't necessarily being completely open armed, open armed accepted. And they, and granted, out to be fair, they didn't make it easy. I mean, they had a bit of a, there was there was a bit of a chip. They, um, I think, a lot of people were afraid of offending. But at the same time, yeah, at the same time, um, it, sh it shouldn't have been as it shouldn't have been as difficult as it was. But that made it hard. I felt it was. It, I oftentimes felt like uh, I was on my own in trying to help these two guys. Um, we weren't getting a lot. We, we, uh, so there were some members of the ward that were really helpful, but there were others that kind of made it more difficult. And and um, at the same time, if we ever crossed a boundary where we did ac accidentally offend uh, someone in that family, um, then we heard about it, and uh, it w that was tough to the point of being um, insulted, to being uh, um, called names, to or accused of different things and that was tough I felt like at different times I felt like I was really on my own like I wasn't getting there were certain points where I felt like I wasn't getting any help from the ward and I wasn't getting any help from from this from them either um, almost like we were trying to help them and the people who were supposed to try to help us to help them weren't and the people we were helping were, didn't want to be helped that at different points and I'll say this to a missionary and or someone who served a mission is like, why do you keep going? Why do you keep going back then? Because they were still moving forward despite all of that. Eventually, um, after meeting with them every day, we met with these, these two boys every day for about an hour, um, almost every day for about an hour. About three months of that, um, Braxton finally um, made the step and, and was baptized. And uh, that was one of the best moments uh, of my life. Um, I remember he, he, he was just so happy. He was so happy on that day. And he looked, uh, he looked at us after he had gotten baptized or maybe it was before he was in his white clothes. And, um, he said, you guys were totally right. Um, and just apologize for a lot of the, a lot of the stuff that was said and a lot of the, you know, the, the difficulty that it taken to get to that point. But, um, that was a huge lesson for me that, uh, it really wasn't about me. Like I had gone through some serious, I would say even depression working with those guys because of what I was experiencing on both ends because of the struggle. But I was able to get outside of myself and just do it for them. During that time, I had two different companions. Um, I started out with Elder Wright as my companion. Later on, it was Elder Rindlisbacher. So I had to be, I was the one who had to uh, carry it through. And Sometimes it's difficult for a missionary coming in who came on exchanges or maybe even coming in on a transfer to see why we were teaching these guys. Um, and I had to be the, the voice that said, no, we're going to continue to teach them because they are moving forward despite all the, the, all the struggle, all the tough things we had to go through to get them there. But uh, yeah, that was, that, was pretty, that was pretty tough. But you know, it, just, it really helped me to, it was good. It was really good for me to actually be able to see the, the, the pinnacle of them, the actual, you know, baptism for that, because that would have been, I would not have gotten the lesson I got out of that had I not been actually seen 
seen that. It's one of those things where some missionaries, they say, this is why I was here. The missionaries always try to find the reason why they're in an area or why they're in a mission, a particular place at a particular time. And for me, one of the main things, main, main reasons why I think I was there was for those guys, for Braxton and Scooter, because I had a reputation in the mission for being pretty stubborn um, as far as not giving up on people. Um, and I can't think of another missionary who would have spent as much time and effort on those guys as, as I did. Not in an arrogant or, or like, you know, pompous way, but you no, know, I was just a little more persistent than, a little more persistent than most people.